Awaken the Warrior Within, because this show is all about overcoming impossible odds. Holly Wagner, along with her husband, Philip, are the lead pastors of Oasis Church. Oasis has been a ray of hope, life, and outreach in Beverly Hills and Hollywood since 1984. Holly is a wife, mom, teacher, author, and cancer survivor. She's passionate about seeing women become who God has designed them to be. Through God Chicks, the women's ministry of Oasis, Holly encourages women to understand their true value and to deepen their relationship with God. Philip and Holly have been married for over 30 years. They have two grown children and call Los Angeles home. Please welcome my friend, Holly Wagner. Hey, welcome, hey, Holly. Good thanks to have for you. having me. <laughs> so, it's good to have you here again. Oh, well, I love hanging out with you and the fam. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did a great uh, women's night last night, and everyone loved your message. And yeah, a lot you, of estrogen in that room. <laughs> It was awesome. <laughs> it's a story of my life. Like I always say, I live with five women. God bless so you. It's like <laughs> <laughs> You've got a new book out called Warrior Chicks. Warrior Chicks. Now, before I that... I so think it's brave of you to even interview a woman who's got a book called Warrior Chicks out. <laughs> You're awesome. Oh, come on. <laughs> now, the one before that was... What was the title of the book before that? Love Works. Love Works. That I, that's the one I wrote with Philip. We, it's yeah. about dating and marriage and... We kind of alternated chapters that he said, she said, which is actually how we stayed married while writing it, so we alternated chapters. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've known you, Sal and I have known you for like, I guess, 15 years, yeah, I think. And you, you are somebody who is always full of life, bubbling, smiling, laughing. And I think sometimes people, because you're a pastor, both mm -hmm. you and Philip, yeah. they just think, well, everything must just be grand in your life. And it's easy for you to teach from the Bible because everything <laughs> is going so well. And really, yeah. that's what people think. Yeah, well, that's but wrong. To be, to be, <laughs> to be I had two moments like that, <laughs> like where everything goes great. <laughs> but to be a warrior, you have mm. to have a battle. Yeah. And life's got stuff. Is that what this book is about, Warrior Chicks? Yes. And I, I think sometimes in our uh, culture today, perhaps, we think that we should be able to get what we want or get the dreams of our heart and that there will be no cost to it that wow. there won't be a battle to fight to get it. And yeah. I think that's naive. And so I think we have a generation of people who um, aren't familiar with the weapons God's given them to actually fight the fights Ooh. and who um, look at a life, they see someone's life and they go, I want that. Now that person has paid 30 year price to get that and they want it tomorrow, <laughs> right? And so I just think, so this book is really hopefully an inspiration about practically how to fight the fights yeah. so that you can fulfill the, the purpose that God's put you here on the planet to fulfill. Very cool. So I would love to just go into some of the things that you share there and just share with people. And if they want the whole thing, they can order the book. We'll show them how. But yeah. where do you start when you say, okay, to be a warrior? Where, where would you start? Uh, well, first of all, realizing that you are. You know, you can be a warrior or a whiner, but you can't really be both, uh, right? So Warrior or whiner. Yeah, <laughs> so, right, because you can complain. We all have really um, challenging situations that we have to navigate. So for me, one of them that I write about in the book was 10 years ago, I navigated cancer. So I could lay around and feel the victim. I could, um, you know, oh, woe is me, this is horrible. Um, and it was, it was all horrible. Who wants to deal with cancer? So I could whine about that and, you know, wave my fists at God and say, why? Or I could make the decision to rise and be the warrior and fight and fight the battle. And so cancer is just one. What does that look like, though? I mean, yeah. you just went poof through a few years of your life. Yeah. And, but when you were in the middle fighting it, was there bad days? Was there bad moments? Oh, there was a l bad days. How did you walk that out? You know, the... the um, just practically speaking, in the beginning, when, when I got the diagnosis, um, was on a Thursday. And um, so Friday, we were processing that. And then Sunday, coming up, was going to be church. And it was actually Super Bowl Sunday in America. It's a big deal. Yeah. And uh, Super Bowl was like a football, oh, you know, okay. that. Okay, anyway, I um, just thought I'd help you out. Um, we do dog sled races in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to come visit. Anyway, um, so it was just going to be this big fun day that we would planned and a bunch of nonsense before each service. And, and so here I am. I have a cancer diagnosis, and we've got church on Sunday. And 
um, at this point we had three morning services and so I was going to have to tell people in each of those services about what was ahead for us. So I just had to, you know, suck it in. And so on those Sundays, um, you know, Philip stood next to me and I just talked to the, our congregation said, hey, there's this journey ahead of us. It's an adventure and it's all going to be good, but here comes the fight. And so I just had to have my game face on and we can do this because you're leading people, right? Mm -hmm. And so then Philip had organized a big party at our house on Sunday afternoon, Super Bowl, <laughs> God bless the man. And it had already been in the work, so we just kept it, right? So I have to be up all day. And then on Monday, I couldn't get out of the bed, right? The, just the weight of the journey ahead of me For was sure. massive. And I, I just laid in bed and um, just started crying. And Philip came in, he said, I was actually wondering when you were gonna get here. Do you know when you were just gonna wow. it, just be aware of what's about to come your way? And so I just couldn't get out of the bed. And so what he did for me was the best thing. He just put a DVD of worship in. Hmm. And so worship filled that room. And I let, it was at that point, it was Darlene Check who was on. <laughs> I let her lead me yeah. in a battle cry. Yeah. And I just in that moment made the decision to make God bigger mm -hmm. than this situation. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not saying it was easy, right? Because mm -hmm. the thoughts and the, the, the knowledge of all that was coming my way, right? But in the middle, I, or in the beginning, I just made a decision to worship God. And um, that became my foundation for every moment of this battle, just to remind myself that God is God and that he's with me on the mountaintops and he's with me in the valleys. And I'm about to walk through this valley. So you're laying in bed, you're crying, um, you're, you're kind of processing. You've got to have a lot of fearful thoughts pushing at you, like, what if I die? Who's going to marry my husband? Well, who's going to be the mom to my kids? Mm -hmm. Like, it's amazing how when you talk with people who have a serious diagnosis, yeah. th these kinds of thing just seems to camp out in your head. Yeah. Did you have to deal with that? Absolutely. No, the, the battle's in your head. Yeah. Right in the beginning, it's fully in your in your mind, and so um, I had to make the decision at that point. Do I? We have choices, and I this is the choice I had. I could put my I could focus my thoughts on the facts, which were really scary, right? Diagnosis: infiltrating ductal carcinoma. I could focus oh. on that, or I could focus my mind on the truth of God's word, which is Jesus went to the cross and paid the price for me to be healthy and whole. First Peter two twenty four. So I could focus on the facts yep. or I could focus on the truth. And that was just the journey that I had to make. And it was a daily battle. Right. So, you know, part of the fact of being a warrior is learning to control your thoughts. Yes. And you, I mean, the truth is you can't always control the first thought, right? Right. But the second one, you have an option and what you dwell on. Very good. So right? true. Yeah. The, what you dwell on. And so there was there were days when I just found myself dwelling on the what ifs. Yeah. You know, what if this happens and what if it had to go like, wait, stop that. What is wrong? With, come on, come on, come on. God is still God, <laughs> right, you know, right. in the midst of this. And, and so put your, put your, you know, control your thoughts. Focus on what he's done for you, the price that's been paid for you. Okay, let me ask you a question because I interview a lot of people who have had this battle. And I find for every mile of road is two miles of ditch. Mm -hmm. For every mile of truth, no, it's true. there's two miles of ditch. And I have so, one group that will never talk about it. They're going to stand in faith. Uh, they won't even touch meds hardly. It's just going to be them and God, and it's a faith thing. And then there's others on the opposite ditch that yes. they're broken. You know, yeah. this this is God's will. I'm, I'm, but you you just notice such a variety of how to handle these situations. And the ones who are in the ditch on one side say the people who are trying to be in faith aren't real there, and some I think do deny yeah. what's going on. What, how did you bring that balance together of going, I gotta talk to my kids, my husband, I gotta deal with real issues right. here, and I have to be a person that's gonna believe that I'm walking this thing out. Was there any guidelines that you discovered or stuck to? I, well, actually, I think the, 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 ex, the extremes that you just mentioned is basically all I'd seen. Yeah. And so um, the ones that were like, I'm not going to talk about it. And they didn't even tell their church or whatever that, what they were battling with. And then the ones who just crawled in a cave and, yeah. you know. So for me, I'm, I'm not those. And, right. And um, so I just had, I also, I, I'm a people person. So I wasn't going to do this battle. You know, the, 
it's like one of the chapters in the book, I talk about that the elite fighting forces of the Earth, whether it's the SAS or the Navy SEALs, whatever, they're deployed in a unit, right? They're sent as a team. It's and true. each of them have strengths and each of them have, you know, there's the, the communications guy, there's the sniper, there's the guy that blows stuff up. They're, you know, everybody's got their job. Yeah. And they're not fighting for each other's job, they're doing their job. And so for me, I'm deployed in a unit. There are people around me that have strengths that I don't have, that they have a purpose I don't have. And so uh, that's what got me through this. And I wasn't about to pretend I didn't have this. And so um, I was pretty careful with my language in that, um, I, I, here's what I did, and this might sound a little strange, but um, I never said I have cancer. I said I was diagnosed with. Right. Because, you know, in Amos it says, how can two walk together unless they're agreed? And I didn't really agree with that, right? So I just thought that's where I would have probably changed my language a little bit. But you I, literally deny its right to be there. You're not a, Right. Yeah. I am. Some people, they just, their identity becomes, right. who am I? I am a cancer person. Right. <laughs> no. No. It, uh, You're a warrior chick. I'm a warrior chick. And this was just <laughs> the battle that I was going to be fighting. Yeah. And, and also, I felt like there was a responsibility on me, probably like you feel as a pastor, to navigate this well because you know there are thousands of, of women who at one point will be navigating or who are and who they need to see somebody who's navigated it with faith right and not denial no. not fake stuff but someone who cried when she needed to cry but who trusted right. in God in the middle of it yes and so that's that's how I did it I just okay. I put my faith in a real God who was going to help me through a really horrible situation and when there were moments when I wanted to crawl into a cave, I trusted the other people in my elite fighting force to go, get out of here. And <laughs> yeah. I gave them the freedom to do that. Okay, Does that make sense? A, that totally. Let's take a break okay. right here. Okay. Then we come back. Let's pick up right there. Because this whole book is about that question. Mm -hmm. How to be a warrior chick. How to recognize life's got stuff. And here's how to get through. So yeah. let's unpack some more of that when we get okay. back. I'll be right back with Holly. I knew that I was going to be healed by God healed by doctors, or healed in heaven when I saw Jesus. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. My guest today is Holly Wagner, who's written this book, Warrior Chicks. <laughs> now, we were talking about what you were going through. Now, you travel a lot speaking to the church, mm -hmm. speaking to women's groups as well. And it seems like it's your passion to walk this thing out, like you just said. So in the book, what, can we go through some of the things that now you say, people need to know this, of, of all the women you're talking to and the men and the churches you're in, what are some of the common areas that you kind of go, whoa, whoa, time out, this right. is the best response. What would you say to a question like that? Um, Where do we start with it? Well, I, one, of the, one of the things that I see today, which is concerning a little bit to me, is that there is a, a generation of people who don't know the Bible. That is true. And the, the I mean, I appreciate the, the television shows we've had about the Bible. I love them, I think they're awesome, but that can't be the only Bible that you know. And so one of the chapters I talk about, I, it's, it's called Get Dressed. And so it's understanding the armor yeah. that God's given you. And so if we don't understand what the shield of faith is, if we don't actually understand about how to use our faith in a real battle, if we don't, and then he talks about the sword is the- Why does he call it a shield? Because it's protection. 
Your faith is your protection. Is your protection against the lies, against doubt, against fear. So when you were diagnosed with cancer, okay, they found it. Mm -hmm. It was there. Mm -hmm. But you're telling me earlier that, okay, I had fully admitted they have diagnosed me with cancer. Right. But there's, but for you, that shield of faith is what? Refusing to acknowledge it's right to be there? Believing right. I'm walking through this right. thing? And, and it's the shield of faith is what, when doubts would come, I'm a, I'm a girl, I'm a human being. Yeah. So fear is going to come at me. That's the, you know, the enemy, that's his weapon, right? It's and it's fear. the faith that stops it. Right. The fiery it's, darts. Right. That stops those darts coming. The Bible talks that the sword, mm -hmm. you know, that we actually defeat the enemy with is the word of God. And so this is the part that gets real to me is that there are, you know, I realized that there was aspects of the Bible that perhaps about healing that I needed to get great at. Yeah. If this was going to be the fight that I was going to be fighting, so I had to be able to pull out my sword and, and use it. So what does the Bible have to say for me in this battle about health and healing? You know, and so in Exodus, it tells me that God's removed sickness from the midst of me. It tells me that his name is Jehovah Rapha and 1 Peter 2, 24. So Psalm 103. So those became the, the weapon that I used to defeat the lies okay. of the enemy. So let me ask you really practical yep. questions because people hear us pastors talk. Yep. You're laying on the bed. Yep. Um, your yep. tears in your eyes. You're getting up in the morning. You feel like garbage. Mm -hmm. You would speak that stuff? How? Yeah, it's not like, you know, the Wizard of Oz where you click your heels and you get yeah, to go into a magic. Never. It's not magic. I don't live in fantasy land. No. But I do know that this is the weapon he's given me. So for me, this is what I use to control the thoughts in my head. You know, the Bible talks about that. Where our thoughts go, there we go, right? Yep. So I, this is the weapon I use to control the thoughts. So I would actually speak these scriptures. I put them on index cards and I would speak them out and walk around my house and I would say them loudly. I had to say them louder than the fear. Than the fear in your head. Yes, because I knew I had doctor's appointments ahead of me or surgeries ahead of me. And so I would speak them loudly. If I, you know, some people, they, you know, they want to do it in their head, you know, just like be quiet. I go, well, you can, but fear was loud to me. <laughs> you know, the, yep, I, there was true. very scary things happening around me. And so I had to, you know, speak it very loudly. I find that with, like in our church, there's, there's, with people attending thousands, there's many of them that are dealing with cancer. It, it seems like when you're beginning to believe God, it's not this just straight, gradually, it's like up and down. Oh, the yeah. Good news, bad news. It's yeah. like every, it just seems to be something I've seen all the time. Yep. Good news, bad news, bad, bad news, bad news, good news. Then it's like, it's like it's yanking. Did you have the same kind of thing? Absolutely. I, I can give you another example. So I was on my way to a, um, so now I'm about two years at this point, now I'm today I'm ten years cancer free. Yay. Wow. So at, Praise at one the point, Lord. That's awesome. It is awesome. That's a huge deal it being is, ten years free. It is. Praise God. Um, and so when I was about two years cancer free, I'm headed to my oncologist. And so I got in the car and <coughs> driving the same place that I went, and all of a sudden I pull in the parking lot and I get in that building and the smell of the building yeah. and it took me back to the di day of diagnosis. So all of a sudden this fear came over me and it wasn't even real. I had no symptoms, there was no problem, but that's the kind of thing that happens is so yeah. you, and everybody has that in different situations, whether it's you know a marriage or a job issue or you know that's mm -hmm. you lose something and so you keep waiting for the other loss. So for me, this fear just overwhelmed me and I had to go, no, 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 no. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. Do you know? And so to me, that's what I'm talking about, the practical use of... It's like the wars in your head. Absolutely. So it's not like some Christians start, they, they get into spiritual warfare almost in kind of a crazy ditch way. But for you, it's like the enemy doesn't have the power. He's messing with my head yeah. to make me accept it. Because yeah. if you don't accept it, then the battle's on. If you do accept it, the battle's over. I, here's what I knew. I knew that I was going to be healed by God, healed by doctors, or healed in heaven when I saw Jesus. Yeah, so there was no fear and in any there's of no, There's no loss, there's, right. there's no lose here. So good. Right, so and so good. I think as a Christian, death isn't the worst thing that could happen to me. That's important to know. <laughs> right? Yeah, because so many of us have lost loved ones and yeah. family. No. And we haven't lost them. No, they're, they're more alive than we are right that's now. That's right, and you know, earth time is short, eternity is long. Billions of years right? together. So my mission is to populate heaven. You know, that right there, I think, is where, see, I'll talk with Christians sometimes who don't want to talk about death. 
I'll often walk in the room and say, hey, okay, let's start talking. Hey, let's talk about dying first. And they kind of go, oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> if we don't talk about that first, it'll be the elephant in the room yeah. that continually destroys your faith every right. time. Let's talk about it. Right. Let's talk about heaven and how powerful and beautiful and amazing. Yeah. And then we get done talking about that so we don't lose. Now right. let's move. To, that's how I actually deal with people, just like you said. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no lose for me here. There's no lose. So I, I, I feel like I had an obligation to do what I could do to fight. So I used the word of God. And then I also changed everything about what I ate. <laughs> It's a big deal. Oh, a lot of green so, stuff. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, and supplements and vitamins and exercise. I learned that I didn't handle stress very well. I went to one of my, I spent a couple of weeks in a holistic hospital and they did a stress test on me. And the doctor asked me, he said, so Holly, how, how do you think you are? And I went, well, I mean, I know I had this diagnosis, but I feel like I'm okay. I'm, you know, I'm just trusting God in this. And he said, okay. So he wired me up. And then he did the stress test, and when he was done, he said, well, let me tell you that your body, the stress level in your body is as if you're staring a roaring lion in the face. Wow. He said, and you don't know it. He said, and that's the problem. So I was unaware. How could you not know that? I was unaware of what stress felt like on okay. the inside. And so it was like I was living my life with my foot on the gas pedal, yep. and, all, and my adrenal system was a mess. And so then he said, we're going to teach you about how to recognize what stresses you. So that's what I had to learn. Because it's not like we're not going to have stress in life. We all are. I mean, life's going to have those moments. So how do you deal with it? And wow. what is it that de-stresses you? Because that makes you sick, doesn't it? Yes. It's, a, part, is, it's a huge yes. issue of sickness today. Dis-ease. Yep. So I had to learn to recognize what stressed me. And, you know, for some people, maybe traveling stresses them. That doesn't stress me out. Because I love meeting people. I love hanging out. I love... <laughs> yeah. That doesn't stress me. You know, relational um, problems stress me out. Yeah. Like when there's a friendship breakdown or, yeah. you know, something with the kids. Anything or, rejection too. Yeah, right. Because that would be what would stress me out. Yeah. So everybody has their thing that stresses them. So I had to learn what that was and then how to deal with it and how to get through it. Have you found, man, our time has gone by so quickly, but have you found that once you, like the Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Right. It doesn't say they perish because the devil's so strong. It doesn't say they perish because right. God is, is reluctant to heal you. Right. It's just knowledge. Yeah. And in your case, there was a couple of areas. Yeah. It was get some food, fuel in your body that's going to heal you up yeah. and deal with the stress. Now do you find yourself recognizing it much quicker? Oh, yes. And, and the things with my personality, it's I wanted, I knew that God was going to do what God was going to do. The doctors were going to do what they were going to do. But Holly needed to do something. Like I wasn't, I'm not a passive person. So I know that's a shock to you. So, <laughs> I, you know, I wasn't, I needed, tell me something I can do. So I could control what went in my mouth. Okay, I can do that. I can control how I exercise. Okay, I can do that. All right, I needed something to do. <laughs> and, so I, and so that helped me kind of navigate some of this. Wow. Man, you're going to have to come back and talk with us some more because okay. we already are out of time. But thank you so much for being with <laughs> uh, us today, Holly. Thanks for having me, Leanne. My guest today was Holly Wagner with the book Warrior Chicks. I want to encourage you to pick up a copy. It's available on the screen. And make sure that you understand that life's got battles or we wouldn't need warriors. Life's got battles or you wouldn't need armor. Life's got battles or you wouldn't need the sword of God's word. And how to use them and how to win in life and get God's perspective on things. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this Spirit Contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. You know, it's so interesting that the Bible makes us into overcomers. We don't just sit passively by while things happen. We rise up as warriors, as men and women, as leaders. And you know, God empowers us to win. It just totally reminds me of being spirit contemporary, being so spiritually alive that as we walk into situations, as storms arise in our lives, that the power of Jesus within us causes us to go through 
anything that would try to stop us. It helps us to weather storms, to be spiritually alive with His strength, His power is the most wonderful feeling you could ever have. But you know, as we live in this real world, we must conduct ourselves in a way that is contemporary. So many people have developed religious jargon. They've developed religious language. The way they act and talk in their church is the way they act and talk in the business place, at their place of work or in their neighborhood. And it just turns people off. You know, when you follow Jesus around, everywhere He went, He knew how to make people feel loved. And we're talking messed up people. He knew how to make people feel accepted. Even though they had made huge mistakes, they were drawn to this Jesus. He could be contemporary. He, could, he knew what to say, what to do in every situation where that person would just look at him and desire to know him better. That's what I want to be like. That's the message we want to get around the world is to be spirit contemporary, is to truly represent Jesus Christ. And Christians need to wake up to this truth. Churches, whole denominations, we can all move to a whole nother level of being spirit contemporary. Today I want to ask you to make a generous donation of $30 or more. Put action to your faith. You're, you're not buying anything, but you're sowing into your own future. You're making it possible for others to also hear about this Jesus. And with my heartfelt thanks, I'd like to send you a very special resource, as well as my daily devotional. Call right now because you'll be changing somebody's eternity. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. On Monday, Leanne Tankersley shares with Leon what it really means to be one of God's creations. Those toxic thoughts jump on the back yeah. of those experiences, right? Yep. And they tell us, you're having a hard time because you're failing. Mm -hmm. You're having a hard time because you're not a good mother. You're having uh, a hard time because you're not as strong as her.